One, two, three, boom, it's mind pump time. Hey, today's giveaway is Maps Performance. This is one of the core Maps programs. Build an amazing, sexy body that moves like an athlete. Here's how you can win free access to Maps Performance. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours. Comment about the episode, say something cool, whatever. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you, and then you'll get free access to Maps Performance. You also have to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. You got to do those things to win anything. So do them right now. Also, we're running a sale right now on two very effective strength building programs, Maps Strong, Maps Powerlift, both 50% off. You can sign up at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code August Special with no space for that discount. All right, here comes the show. Study came out on what they call, this is what this, the article calls uh, short bouts of exercise. They call them exercise snacks, which I think is a stupid name. Just call, exercise them, snacks. Just call them trigger sessions, like the guy who invented them. No. <laughs> what they showed in the study were people, when they did literally super short bouts of exercise throughout the day, so like three minutes or one minute bout of exercise, like you know, 60 squats and then I'm done or whatever, something like that. That the yeah. following day, they had like a 40% increase in their metabolic rate. So they're, and they compared, wow. and then the, the improvements in performance were similar to people who had done longer workouts. So the, in the article, they're like, wow, these really short, intermittent bouts of activity have tremendous benefit. Of the study, another case for trigger sessions. I love it's so wow. great. You see, the, he, you see him grinning when he's doing this, you yeah. know, that's him just like, Yeah, I told you. Oh, I told absolutely. You. Yeah. I told well, you. I've, heard, I've heard strength coaches call it like microdosing too, so yeah. they're all trying to get in on Sal's bandwagon, isn't that? I mean, isn't the is is it Pavel who talked about greasing the groove? Is that who yeah. greasing the groove? Uh, it's, it's, that's uh, kind of the same thing, too. Yeah, right? all joking aside, I didn't, I mean, I, I didn't invent the concept. I, I know people and coaches and strength coaches and athletes have noticed this effect where they do short, very short bouts of exercise, lower intensity oftentimes, and getting, you know, great results. Well, so, uh, I mean, like I said, you, you also perform amazing. the exercise so much more effectively. I mean, you're super, uh, I mean, you're, you're not fatigued. You're, you're able to get your body in good position, good posture. And, uh, you know, like it, it, it just, there's so many other benefits to it besides that it also like charges you up energy wise. Oh yeah, you know, I, I, I want, people can try that. This is another uh, option. Take your normal one hour workout, break it up in the whole day. Yeah, like if you have if you have access to equipment and you don't have nothing else to do throughout the day, or you're going to be around, take your you know whatever twenty sets that you're going to do in your workout, and rather than doing them all at once, do you know some of them you know every two hours. So at the end of the day, you do the same volume but you took all day to kind of break this workout. Try that. Like every time I've done it now a few times, it's very different and it's yeah. really interesting. It's definitely more I've, effective. I've done it before after you, I mean, you were touting that for a while, like what, a couple of years ago when you were you were experimenting with that and you kept talking about how amazing it was. And I've done it a couple of times. The hardest part is the-, the Time yeah, commitment? Yeah, the reality yeah. of being able to be consistent with something like that. It's like uh, very few people have all day to <laughs> break up- yeah. They're, they're, you know, nobody they're, has that kind of time. With yeah, their yeah. Um, but a very cool strategy for hey, it's a Saturday. Maybe I don't have any plans. I don't have to be anywhere, and I'm gonna, you know, I can do that at the gym all day long. Like I, I definitely think there's tremendous value to do that. Well, that's how they work out in prison. You know, a, a lot of a lot of guys yeah. in, in jail. Um, one of the ways that they cope with being locked up is they. Every opportunity they get, they'll do push-ups, pull-ups. remember pull from ups. all your prison experience? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I try to forget. I serve my Keep time. Keep sharpening that shank. Yeah, yeah, no. No, no. I, but they, Who's most likely to go to prison out of the four of us? To you. No way, Justin. <laughs> Justin. No, dude. <laughs> me? Why me, Bro, dude? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. And without okay, giving away, wait, the guy. Without giving away too much, 
okay. without giving away too much, All dude. Right. <laughs> Come on, bro. You t- <laughs> for sure, for sure, you run the highest risk. <laughs> I'm going. Now, hey, Adam is pretty risk. All right, moving uh, along. Moving along sure. from that question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> you don't want to go into that, do you? That's Backfire. A- Actually, what's the uh, what's the uh, what's the law on after so much time has passed that I can't be I can't be convicted of things like that? Well, the what statute is- of limitations. Yeah. yeah, what is statute the statute of limitations? limitations? I don't Five know years. Is- I don't know. I think it depends on what the offense is. Yeah, let's figure that out before I tell stories. Well, no, we got to uh, first talk about your offense. An What's your offense? And then we can... No, 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 let's let's not talk about the offense. Hey, no, Google dead, dead hooker. See how long it's <laughs> Okay, yeah. No, I think there's no statute on that, yeah, honestly. No, no, not a so, murder. But no, here's a, Hey, I tell you what. The, uh, you know, with the way things are going, uh, you know, the most potential person to go to jail would be maybe probably me or Justin. We both have really big mouths. With the way things are yeah. going and stuff, mm. I, I, I tell you what, I know that God, it would be such a you know how weak sauce that would be to go to jail for some like pussy ass shit like that. Yeah, though. just so lame, Speaking right? I said something on Instagram. That's why I'm here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, here's why. What I love, are you at least I'm for? going to prison for some real a shit. Meme? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Hey, here's oh, what would end dude. up happening. I guarantee this is what would happen. I would be in the gulag. Justin would be right next to me, and then somehow Adam would escape, would not have gotten caught, but it would find a way to. Try and break us out. That's the, <laughs> yeah. that's the story. I would Shawshank. You'd be guys. sending us stuff in the mail, yeah. and we'd be like trying to dig our way out. Doug yeah. would be in the gulag too, but he would have just got, he would get absorbed in there and become the leader of the gulag, and you know we would have lost him. Justin, <laughs> were you work, Justin? Were you working yeah. for me when um, our trainer Stephen uh, went to went into jail? <laughs> I love how you say people's names. <laughs> well, that's, that's there's a lot of Stevens. Come that's on, true. I've had a lot of Stevens work for me, so that's not giving away too much. Of it. I don't know. He, I don't know that I remember. A so Steven, I've got so. it somewhere. I gotta find. He was riding me when he. Um, what is the? What's the kind of b- the boys' prison over here? I forget the name. Elmwood. Oh yeah, is yeah, that yeah. right? Elmwood. Yeah. Oh, Elmwood. Oh, I yeah. that, you guys know. I've one? never been there, so I don't okay. Know. So it. I think Elmwood. So I don't know. I don't know how you rate like what you know what level. Well, there's a the San Quentin that was the bad one. That's the real bad right, right. One. So San it wasn't Quentin, crazy, but he he wrote me while he was in there, and I remember I I loved getting his letters because he was kind of like giving me like what it's like. And why did uh, he go there? I don't remember. I really don't remember why why he went in, but he was in for I want to say like six months. And I remember him like breaking down like all the clicks and the gangs and the verbiage and how stuff would get in and out of there. Like it was pretty wild to have him like having somebody in like I, that was the only person I've ever had uh, in jail also writing me letters. Yeah. I've never had that before. I had. Well, a- now all you got to do is pretend to be a girl and uh, and you're fine. Oh, I got DMs about that. I got DMs yeah. from people that have family that are prison guards and they say it is going it's running rampant right now that that's extremely popular to uh get get requested to be transferred over into the Obviously, why, right. Why wouldn't you? If you're going to jail no, for I like know, 10 right? years. I still can't get over that. Yeah, I'm just like still trying to process it. You yeah. keep you keep alluding though to a long period. Why 10 years and fucking 3 months? I'd still do it. Yeah, like, why would true. you not do it for a short period of time? Yeah, like, like, what I, if that's an option, all I have to say is that I Except, identify I mean, as a woman to get it sent over to the woman's prison. Like, uh, yeah. Only thing you'd have to worry about is if, would Katrina take you back? Like, wait a minute. What'd you do for three months? <laughs> yeah. In that women's <laughs> prison. Dude, I had what a- What did you have to do to get out? I had yeah. a sales counselor who worked for me who he was riding in the car with a, this bodybuilder guy. And I guess they had a- bunch of steroids in the trunk and they got pulled over by police officer and you know cops always ask you know what do they always ask right is there anything in the car that what and this guy like he just cracked yeah we got oh my god we got tons of steroids i'm so sorry (laughs) and totally got themselves busted (laughs) really yeah dude and i mean we we couldn't stop making fun of this kid because it's like bro what are you doing (laughs) All you had to do was say he no. He's like so guilty. Yeah. yeah. He's like, ah, you I, got me. I got stuff in the trunk. Ah. Hey, speaking of uh, <laughs> illegal stuff and drugs and all these things like that, that you guys just reminded me. So I found this new show on Netflix uh, called uh, How to Sell Drugs Online Fast. And it's based on a true story of this German kid who uh, is like in high school. And he basically, it sounds like a very Silk Road type of story where he, he started in an online uh, you know, drug website or whatever, and like made millions and millions of dollars. Um, but it got me to thinking, like, 
I've I've never been on the dark web before. Have you guys been on the dark web? No, I think you have to. I don't even know how you do that. Like, what, yeah, do you have to get a, a specific type of computer? What's and that? like, how do you jack into what's it? The, what's, what's it called? Tor? Yeah, Tor is the. Br- I just hear that you get you go through Tor, and then I know we sound like a bunch of fuddy duddies that don't know how to do this. Yeah, because supposedly, like, okay, in the show they they talk about it. If you've never been on the dark web, you were born before uh, 1990. That's yeah. what they say in there. What does it look like? Does it look different than the normal internet? As far yeah. as what's on it, yeah. Well, I mean, just a bunch it, of matrix code, just like <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm. That's what I'm imagining. That's on like, the. That's yeah, on picture. Like, I mean, supposedly there's like Moogle. You know, you gotta use <laughs> Moogle to search. <laughs> well, supposedly for kid. I mean, you should. Ask, you guys should. Ask, you should definitely actually ask your son. He's probably been on it. Oh hell no! It says if you were. That's what they said. They said like every every kid, every this generation, they've all been on there. Before. I'll take his shit away if he's on there, bro. You, you never know, tell he, me. You know he's been on it. If you ask him straight up, be like, "Hey, son, you know, I was thinking about getting on the dark web. I was wondering, <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering if you could hook your dad up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? yeah, 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 <laughs> so, dude. yeah. yeah. Show me the loop. Can you help me navigate? What about Andrew? You're waters? younger. Have you been on the dark web? Yeah, that's uh, what tor, that's what that tour is. I've never tried it. So according to the show, like that's how it, 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 something about like uh, it never links back. It sounds so like yeah, because they can't they can't talking about right now. They can't track it, right? It looks like it's coming from a bunch of different. Yeah, the, the way it's set up, it's to where you can't connect two two things or whatever two yeah. people that. Are, are, well, I just heard that was a cool thing to have uh, if you're traveling and you still want to be able to log in to like like for me like YouTube TV like it only lets you do certain areas. But if you have like a VPN, it allows you to do it well, anywhere. I get DMs from mind pump listeners in China who use uh, VPNs because they, you know, if you're in China, oh. you can't get on certain sites. You can't on, you can't get on Facebook. In fact, I think dude, they're still- illegally listening to us. You know how cool that is. That's way cool. Yeah, black market yeah. mind pumps. We awesome. should definitely send someone a shirt for That's that. Rad. If you listen to the show on okay, the dark I, web, yeah, on the dark web, yeah. because yeah, comment. We live in a communist, we're communist you country. Something. We will hook you up. I'll send you one of our, our uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, we don't get you caught. Our yeah. lifting and liberty shirts. That's all. <laughs> and you can wear it and get thrown in jail. So none of you guys have, and you guys, no, you guys don't know if your kids have ever been on it. You don't know. You, I can't. I had no, I mean, I have no desire to, what, what am I going to do? I, 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 I'm curious. To get on there? Yeah. I'm, don't you I'm want afraid to know what, of what I'll see. I have some curiosity. Yeah, just what it yeah. looks like, really. I wanna do, maybe, Doug, you can work on this hey, today. Doug, Google dark <laughs> web. Google, <laughs> <laughs> Google how to get on the dark web. Get us, get us up. <laughs> or Andrew, you should, like you're the young one. You're the young one in the group. You should be able to do this. Yeah, get us a VPN. Let's see if we can. How uh, do we not have somebody who works for us that can help us out with this? Yeah, let's. maybe we should talk about this on air. It don't fucking matter if we're on there. If we get on there, then they should be able to track us or find us, right? And is it is it technically illegal to get on the dark? web yes oh it is i i think i don't know if it's illegal to get on the dark web you know what that's a good question maybe it's just illegal to buy anything on the dark web but you can get on there and nobody cares that's and, a good and question. is everything on the dark web illegal or is there anything on the dark web that is legitimate too uh i don't know why would you why would well, there be anything on there that's legit because i don't know I don't aren't know those forums it. like uh, uh reddit you know you go past there's a bunch of other ones that you know they allow certain communication where they can p- post stuff that's like really controversial. Um, isn't that like close to dark web stuff? Yeah, I don't I don't know. It, look, it says here that See, so it's not illegal to access the dark web. And so there's and there's and it says that there's perfectly legal stuff that's on there too. Wow. Some people just want it just to uh, be anonymous. So you just just so you cannot be tracked or found for a, I wonder what it looks like. I know. Can we can we do this? <laughs> like I'm just I, after watching this show. Like I'm all in. I got sucked into it. It's really good. I'm already. Uh, I just finished the first season. There's three seasons, and as long as you can get by the um, the dubbing, right? So they're oh on that show. Yeah, that's the only thing that's. It, but I mean, it's, you want to know it's good plot. You want to know what's funny? Here's mm. one of the side effects of the this dark web, you know, trade or whatever, like like drugs. We because drugs is a big thing that people will buy on the dark web, obviously, right? The quality of the drugs that people are getting is so much better. Yeah. Because it's like the Yelp system. Yeah. Because they have ratings. Yeah. So people will go on there to buy drugs from some anonymous dealer. And then the dealer will have 
ratings, like if they're on like Amazon or something, five star, and there's comments. Oh yeah, delivered very easily, very clean. You know, I, I don't know how much of this one is, star it was all oregano. I don't know how much <laughs> of this is is accurate to how it really happened in real life with this kid, but that's actually one of the main parts of the show is that. Then they, when they first start doing this, their original source of the drugs was getting lots of bad reviews. So they had to find another source that, well, because people were having like reactions, and, it, <laughs> and so he's getting all these negative things. And that was like a that was a very pivotal point for the business was they we got to find somebody who's got a better source of drugs. One of the the unintended consequences of the war on drugs is m more overdoses because they con they make the drugs stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. Um, so number one, number two, impurities, fake, whatever infections. Uh, so it's funny because it's actually safer. I'm not advocating for, you know, whatever it's, it's your personal choice. And of course you want to break the law, whatever, but, uh, it's safer apparently from what I've read to buy things like that online, of which course. is wild. Yeah. No. Super, super wild to me. I mean, don't you think we're speaking moving? of. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I was just say, speaking of buying things online, <laughs> here's my transition. Uh, I just, I just uh, was looking around. I've been wearing these shorts, and uh, I just saw that Viore just came out with some camo shorts. I'm like totally into this whole camo vibe right now. So I got that coming in. They're like sweat shorts. You guys wear a lot of sweat shorts. <laughs> oh yeah. Your commercial transitions are the best. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> you just transitioned from us talking about uh, selling drugs online uh, to I bought Viore shorts. Well, online is awesome. Is my point. Yeah. So you can you can get a plethora Dude, of things. Let me tell you something. Viore shorts are so fucking awesome. <laughs> it's almost black market. I mean, it's almost illegal. You almost right get there. high off the experience, yeah. you guys. Hold on yeah, a second, because we've been doing this virtual now for a little while since you you know you're. I thought you weren't even wearing any. Pants are you wearing right pants? Can't stand up. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see what you got on right now. Uh, Andrew should uh, oh, okay. He's do got the pants on. Can you do like the bubble? Oh, I look do. at those. Hey. Yeah, those are cool. Oh, the Sunday joggers are now in camo? Yeah. What? Yeah, dude, camo's back, you guys. I like it. What? Yeah. You know what's funny? What if Justin stood up right now and actually was naked from the waist down? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go back Wait, this just, this a just big dropped. Bar, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> the, oh, sick. I did not know this. Put a big sensor bar on there. Um, are you going to get those, Adam? Are you going to yeah. get those pants? No. Well, the Sunday joggers, Whoa. those and the, what is it, the, the meta, meta, meta ones, the, those are the, my two favorite. Do, what? Are, tell me if they have, the, they don't have camo in the in the meta, do they? Is it, am I saying that right? Meta, I think. Meta, yeah. yeah. You know, it's the I know they have them in core. The core has uh, camo as well, but I, I got the, the Ponto ones because I like to work out in them. Well, That's only, my favorite. The only problem kind. with the camo stuff is hard to find when you're trying to get them. You know, Stop it. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I had to set myself up with the dead. Whoa, where, where'd my legs go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's blended. <laughs> you know, speaking of camo, uh, you know how much that's changed over the years with the kind of the stuff that the military wears? What have, do you mean? So the the original camo, I think, was, was invented during, I want to say, the Vietnam War. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's when they first. Started. Yeah, it's like a lot of jungle pattern. Yeah, like that and, was the original. Yeah. And then it looks more like, like desert stormish. But not just that; they use different edges. It's like pixelated now. Almost. Yes, because apparently at a distance, it's got better. Have you seen them? You've seen that, right? It looks like pixelated camo versus the like the the Vietnam type camo. I'm not sure. I, I mean, I can picture like the kind of the desert storm look, right? With those kind of uh, the lighter colors. Yeah, camo colors and stuff like that. No, but. it's the edges are different. Doug, maybe you could look up, uh, you know, old army camo versus new army camo. It looks uh, it looks different. And it's because they found that the blurred, like the pixelated edges and stuff is makes it more effective. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm. But up close, it looks weird, right? Because it looks like, you know, you made it with a, a computer. Well, speaking of that, you know, it's weird. So oh, another terrible you, transition. You think, here we go. Yeah, here you go. Uh, <laughs> what, <laughs> come what, on, Adam. What me. <laughs> go ahead, sorry. <laughs> it's not a commercial. It's oh, not a commercial. Yeah. Uh, no, Ed, this is a, an animal factoid. So you guys know that um, polar bears, so they, it looks like they have like white fur, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wait, yeah. So it's, it's really like transparent. Uh, Cause they have black skin. Their skin. They have black skin. Yeah. Which is weird. It I absorbs and also, heat. Uh, so that. go ahead. Oh, it absorbs heat, right? That's why they have black skin. It helps them absorb heat. 
so that they stay uh-huh. warmer in the freezing snow. Oh, interesting. So if you were to sh- if yeah. you were to shave a polar bear, he would be black. He wouldn't be white. He'd be black. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Yep. It, I did not. And know what's kind of cool too is that like tigers, I guess their skin is actually striped too, so it's not just their fur. Wow, I didn't know that. That's really weird. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great animal facts. They're that good. was a good transition. There you go. Hey, yeah. uh, what do you think would win in a fight? A tiger or a lion? A lion? lion. Uh, <laughs> a, li- a lion outweighs the tiger quite a bit, no? No. no. The tigers. Tiger's bigger. Mm-hmm. Oh, the tiger is bigger. Yeah, tiger's bigger than a lion. A tiger will dominate, dude. Yeah, no. Those things, I, those things are vicious. Here's no? Th- no, I, I've researched this. <laughs> uh. I was up, I was up late <laughs> one night. To, to gladiator days? Bro, these are, these are questions that need to be answered, right? Yeah, so, no, this is great. Welcome to Mind Pump. Yeah, so lions, apparently, here's why they say a lot, because lions are smaller. Tigers are, much, are bigger, a lot bigger. But they say that a lion will probably win because lions fight often in the wild with each other, whereas tigers are more solitary creatures and they don't they don't engage in like territorial fights and stuff like lions. So lions are basically, you know, fighters. It's crazy though because they're bigger and they're so much more ferocious. Like they're so much more athletic. You, you know, you remember back? I don't know if it was in the San Francisco Zoo, but it's like kind of like an open uh, fence. But there was, I don't know how tall it was, but it, one of them literally leaped out and, and mauled some people. Have you ever seen the video of, I don't know where this is, it might be India, where there's a, like a, a guide on top of an elephant, right? So he's on the elephant, and in the grass is a lion, excuse me, a tiger, and the tiger leaps and jumps over the freaking, over the elephant into the dude, like to yeah. get the guy. He's oh. on an elephant. That's what I'm saying. Like their their athleticism is on another level. Yeah, it's it's scary. Yeah. Now, do there is there examples of them fighting, or is that just is this all theory that they? Cause well, you, you, so so here's what's very interesting, right? The Romans during and this was terrible. Okay, so I'm not saying this is cool or anything. It's interesting to read about, but the Romans in the Colosseums, you know, they used to have gladiators fight, and then they would do things like they'd flood the Colosseum and do these simulated naval battles. But what they yeah. also used to do, because the Roman Empire was massive, right? It spanned through, you know, most of the, uh, just a huge portion of the known, whatever you want to call it, civilized world. They would capture animals from all over the world, lions, tigers, bears from, you know, parts of Russia, uh, elephants, hippos, alligators, and then they would put them in the Colosseum and have them fight. And so there's records of what animals would often beat other animals oh, in really? the Colosseum. The undisputed champion is the hippo. Hippo. The, the hippo. Yep. Would, you know, in, in, according Toughest to the, animal on the planet. Yeah. Hippo would just, uh, according to these records, would just fuck up whatever they put in I there. I mean, what would, like, just sheer size-wise, what would even have a chance with that? Like, what, what other animal could you even imagine? I mean, with the size of their jaw, the size of their body weight, like what? And would, they're aggressive. Yeah, like what would even have a chance? A chance? I don't know, but if I didn't know that, I would think a lion would beat it, right? Or a bear, or like a. I, yeah, I don't know because you, you you think that like elephants are somewhat docile, but some of those bull elephants can wreck shop. So oh, yeah, I don't know, maybe maybe one of those to like at least knock it over. Yeah, that's true. Uh, who was it that? Uh, like fought the Romans and and beat them in some battles because they had elephants. Hannibal, I think. Hannibal, yeah, dude. I didn't know that. Yeah, he he attacked with elephants and the Romans were like, "What the fuck? Like this is. <laughs> yeah. like, what, what are we <laughs> yeah, gonna we're do? We're out of here. No one saw that coming. Yeah, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy stuff. What the what they would do? Pretty, of course, very inhumane. But you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Interesting. Hey, I got some good news. I know. You know, here's the deal. Uh, we were this morning. We came in right, and Adam and I are sitting down, hanging out, getting ready to do the podcast. And uh, Adam's like, man, I feel so negative lately. And, you know, I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, well, it's fuck all the news, right? It's just so net. And it has been for like two years. Yeah. Just constant yeah. negative. Just negative inundated nonsense. Crap. Just just negative. Like you look at the news and you just want to, you know, hide. Right. Anyway, I looked up some positive news because I said we need to balance this out a little bit. You guys want to hear some cool, uh, happy, good stories? I do. All right. So please, especially so, since you thought of that. Yes. <laughs> so, so check this out. Right, two Boy Scouts, a 16 year old and a 15 year old. So Joseph Deanner and Dominic Viet were exploring their hometown of Columbia, Missouri, on Friday to survey the damage after a massive rainfall flooded parts of the city. 
what they actually did, which is what they did, they saw a woman who was in the floodwaters clinging to a basketball hoop, and they went in there and saved her life. Oh, so two wow. two Boy Scouts went in there. Good job! Her. Hell yeah! Right? How old was the, How old was the lady? Um, I, I don't know. I, I just closed the page. I think she oh. was. Yeah, she was in her. I think she was in her thirties or forties. And where was that at again? This was in Colo- in uh, Ohio. No, Mizzou, uh, Missouri. Sorry, in Missouri. They just had really bad floods over there right now. They did. Uh, obviously, yeah, I guess. I didn't know that. Yeah. How good is that, right? No, that's good. Here's news. another good story that's really that's nice. awesome. So, Polish javelin thrower, Maria, I can't even say this last name, Andrzej, something like that. There's a lot of, there's not very many vowels in this last name. Yeah. But she All got consonants. a silver medal at the Tokyo Olympics. Okay. She sold it, uh, auctioned it off for $125,000. Oh, wow. To pay for an infant's heart surgery. Oh, so she sold her yeah. silver medal so that an infant could get life-saving heart surgery. I didn't know they can get that much for those. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought they were just plated. Are they, are they like real silver and real gold, like all the way through? That's a good question. I think so. But yeah, I and, thought, and who buys one? Like a like a trophy parent, you know, like a participation award parent. Yeah. Like, well, what I mean, are they doing? They, I mean, obviously they're rare. There's only so many medals that you're going to get. For, it's a, it's an official medal. Well, right? I mean, if it I, it makes sense if it's actually gold all the way through and you can melt it down and sell it one day if you have to so it makes kind of sense to do it i mean that's like an investment right so if you could have you yeah. could have a cool medal that you could say you yeah, had maybe your favorite swimmer or runner or some shit and then also you can metal you just like scratch out the name you know and you try and etch yours in there all right here doug pulled it up right now well okay so it says oh so the last time the olympic medals were solid gold were in the 1912 summer olympics so they're but just, now they're just played it no, well, now they're required to be made from at least 92% silver and contain a minimum of six grams of gold. So mm. they have to have some gold in them. But That's not, not very much, though. They're not solid gold. What's, what's, what's a, a gold for an ounce right now, Doug? I think eighteen hundred dollars or so. Holy shit! So eighteen hundred. But that's six grams, which is very little. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's not, like nothing. That's not much at all. Yeah, that sucks. Have you ever held like solid gold in your hand before? Like, like a like a gold bar, not just a, a little bar. nugget, bro. Yeah. You know how heavy it is. It's very strange. You know how soft it is. I know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, you you bite it. Yeah. You did. Well, I mean, I didn't. I've never <laughs> I've never held held a gold bar before. But I've bit like my you know my watches and stuff like that. Are that it's really soft. I'd say that's a downfall of like like gold jewelry is that it's so soft that it nicks and smudges like really easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, that's kind of lame that they don't do that. I thought for sure they they had they had actually some real value to them. So then, how does someone get one hundred twenty five thousand dollars? Because it's it? a rare it's a rare thing. It's a it's a gold. I mean, yeah. shit. There was a wasn't there like freaking piece of toast? Yeah, they don't like, just hand those out to anybody. <laughs> yeah, didn't they sell a piece of toast on eBay for I don't know how much <laughs> yeah, money? Dur- that was the Dorito story. Oh, whatever. Yeah, because yeah. they had like the, the Mother <laughs> Teresa on it. That's, or something. Silly stuff, though. Yeah, it's crazy. So, but uh, but I mean, how nice is that, right? She she sold it to to. Help I mean, if you kids. were somebody like like okay, you're somebody like Michael Phelps. Would you guys would you sell some of those, or would you just hang on to all those medals? Uh, you know, that's a good question. That's actually a really good. I I don't know if I'd sell them all. Yeah, why would you sell them? I mean, you I, earned I, it, all those things. Yeah, but you I get a hundred, hundred something thousand dollars for them. I mean, if she can get one if for a silver medal, if you can get a hundred something, I'd imagine you get. 150, 200 for a gold medal, right? Especially it's Michael Phelps because he's he's the the most winningest Olympic athlete of all time. Yeah, yeah. But you'd have to be pretty desperate. I think it would sound sad though. I feel like I would sell it all would. of them, but one. I'd have one for the memory and just be like, yeah, I won a bunch of these. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. shut up. I sold them though. No, you wouldn't. You'd have a big glass case in your house. <laughs> no, yes, way, you dude. would. No, dude. I would not. totally. No, yeah, just no, a no. shrine. No, no, no. Yeah. I do. I I have trophies, but I have them in my box. Yeah, hey, I don't hey, put them out anymore. You'd wear them to work, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> I might for a little while. Maybe just, maybe just every a while. every business meeting he's in. He's I mean, just it's like, pretty tough. You got if you have an Olympic gold medal around your neck. I mean, who's gonna talk some shit? It's and, true, right? You know what I'm saying like that's nobody. Pretty, that's pretty yeah. tough. Unless you unless you win. Yeah, it you like, don't have one. Yeah, you know? that's it's true. an immediate flex. Yeah. Unless you win it, like uh, God, what are some of the sports that they? <laughs> I don't want to talk shit because it's really hard. So, but there's some sports. I'm just like, how did this get in the Olympics? 
What's the one where they uh, twirl the, the the string, the uh, flag or color guard? Yeah, stuff I don't know what that twir- is. Twirling? I don't know. I don't know, but that's an Olympic sport. They've added quite a bit lately, haven't they? How, how does that work? Do you guys know, like every year, or every or every every time the Olympics come around, like they add in so yeah. many sports or take like, and they do take away sometimes. Well, they too, tried right? to take away wrestling, which was to me I, was infuriating that they would do something like oh, one of the oldest yeah. Olympic sports, if not one, if not the oldest Olympic sport. I think maybe racing is older. Uh, foot Dude, race, but, you know, wrestling has been in there know, forever. I used to like kind of giggle a bit about the whole um, synchronized swimming thing, but dude, they have crazy improved that sport. Have you? Did you guys watch that at all? I they did. Do the craziest stuff I've ever seen. Oh, yeah. So I used to train a, a girl who almost made it to the Olympics for synchronized swimming, and she was explaining to me the training and stuff that they did. Insane. If you're, you're, do you ever watch underwater? So when they have their legs up and they're doing, they're all look exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. Watch just, under <laughs> how the hell they're able to maintain such a steady position while they're upside I have no down. No idea. And they use their hands and it's crazy. It's yeah. insane training with these. Uh, What's with these what I think is insane about that is like at what point in your life how do you like decide like you know what I'm gonna do. You know, like you're like fl- playing around in the pool with your friends one day and you're just like really good at it or something. And then, <laughs> yeah. and then you pursue yeah. it. Like, I, you know, or I, I, how are you as a you're parent? Like, you're like, you know what I'm going to get my kid into? Like, yeah, like how does that start? Like, I just don't, I don't understand. You get like things like skateboarding and wrestling and, and traditional sports that are played in high school and That's, that are, I know. you know, common games. But it's like something like synchronized swimming. Like when, when did you get a chance to do that yeah. or see that? And you have to get your friends to buy in with you. Yeah. You know? Okay. You're <laughs> yeah. doing this move and yeah. I'm doing this move. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. We're exactly. all going to look exactly the same. <laughs> like, what are you doing? You know, it's a weird sport, but it's extremely popular in uh, Canada. Like it's, I think if, if I'm not mistaken, it's like one of the top three popular sports in Canada. Curling. Curling. You oh, ever seen curling? Yeah. 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 What a they, weird! They, sp- they do not like when you talk trash about. Curling. No, they get really angry. So yeah. I think it's cool. I mean, I love uh, what's the the table version of that um, shuffleboard or whatever. Oh yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like real life shuffleboard. Yeah, or- it's like you know, like humans are big size. You know, shuffleboard. It's yeah. really what it is. Yeah, it, so they have brooms and they're just. <laughs> I, dude, when I the first time I watched it, I was my I was like my mind was blown. Like, what is going on? Why are they sliding across the ice with the rock? And then someone sweeping yeah. the floor. I saw they added skateboarding this year. So that was new. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they didn't have they didn't have skateboarding before, so that's that's totally new. Um, what else did they got added? Surfing. Oh, they had rock, oh, rock surfing. climbing. Yeah, surfing, oh. uh, rock climbing, climbing karate, which I'm surprised. Yeah, I did in see that. I, oh, I did watch karate. That's cool. Yeah, a lot of it was like uh, kata and form, like so you're getting judged on your technique. Uh, Taekwondo's mm. been in there a while. Uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu needs to be in the Olympics. I would love to yeah, see that. Yeah, for sure. In the, it's not? No, it's not. Judo. Judo's been in there forever. Yeah, so how, I mean, is it, uh, who who decides and is there like a vote? Like, if Yeah, it, there's a committee. A, a bunch of people that are saying, hey, we got to put this sport I in. think you have to show, if I'm not mistaken, because I remember when Ben Weeder, so this is Joe Weeder's brother, right? So Joe Weeder's the, you know, one of the godfathers of bodybuilding. His brother, Ben, was on this lifelong me- uh, mission to make bodybuilding an Olympic sport. And I, so I remember reading articles about the challenges. And one thing you have to show is that enough there's enough international participation in that sport for it to be an Olympic event. So if you bring forth a sport and they're like, yeah, but you know what? Like most countries don't have a lot of people competing in the sport, then they won't allow it in. So that's part of it, right? Yeah. Big part of it is showing that. And then, of course, bodybuilding never become became an Olympic sport because I can't imagine the drug testing <laughs> that do with bodybuilding. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, they could do natural, right? But, I mean, that's such a they subjective would very sport. Different. Well, nobody yeah. wants to watch that. Yeah, it's boring. Bodybuilding? Yeah, it's, I think it's fun. I like watching bodybuilding. Do you, no, you, you haven't watched a bodybuilding show in a long time. You know, you? I don't follow it like I used to as a kid, but I think it's pretty, it still trips me out. I think it's really cool still. Jessica thinks I'm so weird. She's like, why are you looking at flexing? You know, dude's flexing. I'm like, dude, would, I'm like, wouldn't it be cool to like be like that just for a day to see what that feels it's like? Only She's like dude, no. It's only dudes that look at that. No girls watch dudes uh, flexing. I don't ever think I've seen a girl. I've never walked in and seen like a, a handful of girls watching like bodybuilding shows. That's pretty weird. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and it's just like the same thing when you're in a gym. When you're a buff guy in the gym, it's never... I yeah. don't think I've all ever the, had all a, the bros come yeah, up to you. A girl has dude. never came up and been like, "Oh my god, your shoulders or your arms are so amazing." Like it's yeah. always a dude. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always yeah. a dude, you know? Yeah, but you still feel good about it. Yeah, well, yeah. no. I, I mean, obviously, subconsciously, that's who we're, we're really trying Man, to you're impress. Because if it was the girls, we wouldn't be doing that because they obviously don't give a shit. No, no. All the research shows that most most girls like an average kind of body look anyway. So yeah. this extreme version that we go to as guys is to really appeal to other guys. Yeah, <laughs> It really is. I know. Isn't that funny? <laughs> it's totally, especially when you're getting big. Oh, yeah. You know, especially when you're getting all bulked up. Yeah. That's so that the dudes get impressed with, the, you know, whatever, what you look like. Anyway, yeah. hilarious. So, Justin, uh, how are you doing right now with your training and stuff? Since you're not, you haven't been around. Oh, you got the, you have your your equipment at home. Have you been pretty consistent? I do. Well, I'm debating because we're moving. I'm like, uh, do I sell my current version of uh, you know PRX spot rack because they've improved? You know, even since I bought my first one. Or do I just keep that one and transfer it over to the new place? But um, yeah, I've I've definitely been able to keep consistent. But when I was going through double days with training or um, you know out there coaching with with the kids, like it was kind of funny because I was doing light sessions in the morning, um, but I was getting so sore because I couldn't help myself. I was out there on the field trying to give the the first team offense a look and so a lot of times we're we're a little bit low on players so i'm like i'll just jump in at linebacker or something and uh you know like get a pad and just rough these kids up and when these kids get pads on and a helmet like they grow in size and, <laughs> and weight and it's like oh at, at, after the first like five or six hits you're just kind of like oh yeah you know i was like oh it's fun getting in contact again and then there's this one kid who's just, and he's a sophomore, and he is just like a beast. He's like a bus. He kept hitting me. And I was like <laughs> so sore. Oh, my God. My shoulder was just like aching all night. And I'm like, what am I doing? I'm 41 years old, and I'm smashing against, you know, these 18-year-old kids, and they're killing me. Now, so, has, has, yeah. It, has this sparked you? Uh, are you watching? Are you following uh, regular football now because you're in the coaching realm right now, or are you not? Are you not following it any more than you normally would be? I'm I'm trying to pay more attention. Let's put it that way. Um, so I'm I'm definitely like back into watching NFL. Um, but right now I'm I'm really just trying to listen to podcasts and watch videos and get back in the mindset of schematics and, and trying to break down. Uh, the why of of all these different types of plays because we're we're now going to be in our first competition this Friday, um, and we're going to see a bunch of different looks. And so I actually was spending about I don't know five hours yesterday just with one of the coaches drawing up uh, a defensive set against different formations, and like we're just going through all the options. Oh, but if we put them here in this technique, it's going to affect you know, our linebackers and our DBs are going to have to shift over and like, how are we going to call this? So it's not so confusing. And so it's, it's, it's fun, but it's also really a lot more challenging than people realize. It's like chess. Yeah. I, you know, when you, when you were talking about, you know, doing some contact with the kids, I mean, you're one of the coaches, I would imagine the kids in their mind, they're like, I'm going to hit the coach as hard as I think. Like the goal is to show the coach. <laughs> oh, you think so? Oh, yeah. I would. I think it would be the opposite. Well, oh, no, I would be like, because they, first of all, they probably look at you and, they, and you're a big guy, right? So they think, oh, you know, and plus they want to impress him. So I'm sure they're just going at it when they hit him. Am, am I wrong? Or am I right? Um, there may be like two kids like that, but the rest of them were a little more kind of intimidated. I'm yeah, trying to like that. spark that kind of uh, killer uh, like going to, to, to seek out contact kind of a feel. So it, it's funny too, because I kind of got the head coach uh, fired up and, and we were doing these tackling drills and he decided to, to move one of the kids over. And he's like, tackle me. And he's like six, four, like, you know, 260 pounds or something. He's a big guy. And so these kids are like trying to tackle him and they can't because he's just a monster. And so he, he points me out and he's like, Coach Andrews, like, show them form technique. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I was, like, really nervous because I haven't, like, really, you know, I haven't, like, put myself on full display like that in a long time. And But thankfully, I, I was able to pull it off. I picked them up and drove them into the pad, uh, and, uh, you know, it worked out. But, um, yeah, I was like, oh, no, don't mess this up in front of the entire team, you know. <laughs> 
Oh, that's got to be so fun. You know, I can only imagine like working with a bunch of kids and it's got to be so challenging to not get your testosterone to just fire up and be like, oh, I want to jump oh, in here. It's it's up, dude. I'm trying to calm myself down because I'm realizing uh, I'll come home and I'm just achy and <laughs> <laughs> sore, like mending my wounds, you know. Is Friday so. a is Friday a full full scrimmage like a normal scrimmage or is it like half pads half not type of deal? What, what's it like? Is it going to be? Yeah, it's the jamboree. So this is actually we're going to face uh, three different teams and we're going to run some offense plays against their defense and then uh, some defensive plays against other teams' offenses. So we get like five different series, three on offense and then two on defense against three different schools. So um, we're going to be able to see kind of – it counts as a practice for them too, which I found out, which is great, because there's some kids that still need X amount of practices in order to, uh, you know, qualify to play. Who's who's um, the rival school? You guys have a rival, right? Yeah. Um, you know, that's changed over the years. For us, it was Harbor, um, but now it's Scotts Valley because they're so close. And, like, one of our coaches that I um, was in the program when I was there – he went over to Scotts Valley, and so Scotts Valley's like there's heated rivalry uh, between the two schools, and so we're already kind of like that, and that's what I was scheming uh, for for like four hours, just trying to make sure that we are ready because they're going to throw a bunch of uh, surprise stuff at us because that's just what they do because they want to catch you on your toes. That's so. fun. Dude. I feel hey. like that's the game we should go to. We should go to the rival game. So you'll have to tell us when, oh, when the, yeah. when the, when the okay. rival game is 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 going. That we'll we'll go to that one. You know, speaking that, of that's going to be a good one. Speaking of surprises, let me show you how you transition to a commercial, Justin. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was really right, Dad. I was I yeah. was surprised me, at uh, how good Paleo Paleo Valley's bars are because I, I don't, the audience doesn't know this, but when they they first when they first started releasing the bars, we actually re- refused to promote them because we thought they tasted like shit. And I was like, no, there's no way we're going to talk about these bars because none of us want to eat them. But they have came out with a lemon bar fa- flavor that I'm addicted to. Yeah, like, what is it? Lemon something. It's a lemon bar, right? Is it's it called, just, just lemon? I think it's called lemon bar. Is or what lemon I, I think or that's the, like that. the name of it. What is it? Lemon meringue. Oh, lemon, lemon meringue. meringue. So that no, it is, good. Re- is really good. Easy, I, easy to digest uh, for me. I have issues with bars sometimes. Easy to digest. It's got... Um, is that because they don't use whey? They use something else? Yeah, or? bone broth uh, protein. Okay. Collagen protein um, and uh, you know, good ingredients. It's not super high calorie. And, and it, it's really good. Yeah, no, I know. I love it. I've been eating them almost every single day, and I have not been a fan of the previous flavors, but they hit it out the park with this one for yeah, sure. Yeah, they did. That's a good. That was a good transition. Good job. There. <laughs> hey, speaking of, uh, we were talking about rivals earlier. What's the news with Amazon and Walmart? Is, is it oh, Amazon so a- start? Amazon just officially uh, passed Walmart as the the largest retailer. So, wow, yeah, six hundred and I think six hundred and ten billion dollars in retail revenue. Wow, yeah. You know, it, this is just a, a it's a great example when people because Walmart for a long time, people were like, oh, they're a monopoly. They control too much. They're too powerful. This is, this shows the power of the market. You know, a company like Amazon comes out and uh, unseats them as the king. Of retail, that's yeah. incredible to me. Yeah. Huge, huge. Yeah. No, no, that's, a, that's a big deal. Hey, I was reading uh, our YouTube co- I, YouTube comments cracked me up, right? Um, and remember, we were talking about the cremate thing. Oh yeah, about what? Yeah, where we if we would be sprinkled. cremated, this or that, where we would be. And so, this one one of the guys in there said, "I told my wife that I want to be cremated and put in chili so I could tear that ass up one more time." <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I fell out of my chair. Oh, oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, that honey, guy's a more, genius. One more time. <laughs> oh! oh, that brings I, I back memories. That pretty good. <laughs> That's disgusting. That's terrible. Yeah, you know when we were talking about that, I I don't know anybody. Uh, nobody in my family. No, I never. I don't never know anybody to get cremated. Oh really? No. I think I, I've had more in my family than oh, have. Really? I have not. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Do you guys save it? Uh, I have my grandmother, so I have her. I have her saved. I actually am the one that you has have it. it. Yeah, I have it. Where do you save it? Uh, it's in my house. I have it up and stored up in my closet. Really? So, yeah, she's in, in like a what do you call it? Urn or whatever urn? An urn. Yeah. Urn. Sorry, urn. Urn. Yeah. Yeah. 
So I've I've had it for I've actually had it for a long time and 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 have talked about potentially spreading her ashes somewhere. But as of right now, I haven't. I've just I've kept them. You have any ideas of where you would uh, want to spread them? I don't because there wasn't like you see if her and I had like a place that we went to or like uh, my grandmother was a super homebody and I mean if she if like if she went out it was maybe to go shopping, uh, pick up lotto tickets or cigarettes or to gamble like that was like that was her her thing and so i'm obviously not going to spread ashes at like a las vegas casino or something so that's <laughs> or at the 7-eleven <laughs> yeah or at 7-eleven <laughs> so yeah, you just walk in <laughs> yeah so, <laughs> so, <laughs> well, later <laughs> so yeah no i've just kept her so i've kept her and i've i've had her uh obviously since she passed which has been years years ago now um and i've talked about spreading her ashes but i don't know where i would do it i would probably do it somewhere like i talked about that i think is just kind of non-traditional which is the spreading in the ocean yeah. or something oh you know speaking of grandparents i and i'll give this to andrew to put on the on the youtube i got some great old pictures of my grandfather and my grandmother they look really cool my grandfather was a handsome handsome devil oh yeah yeah i'll show you guys afterwards and then my grandma she's a, you know, obviously a doll um and then they have a picture with my grandfather with uh, not all of his brothers, but some of his brothers. Now, did you tell the story on how they met? Because you told how your parents met, but you didn't, I don't think you told how you- I don't know how my grandparents- As I say, do you know My that? grandmother was 16 when she got married to my grandfather, oh, which, yeah. which was not oh, uncommon no. in those days in uh, in Sicily. My was, mom was that old when she- So it's not- it was, She was 16 when-, when Was my, she? Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. It was In Sicily, definitely wasn't uh, uncommon. That was quite common for girls to get married uh, at that age. So she was pretty- I can't, I can't imagine. You know, we were talking about how you know parents- being the ones that like set up, I, I would think though, I mean, how do you feel right now? Do you think that you would do a better job at matching your son up for a life partner for the rest of his life? Or do you think he would do a better job of matching his own life partner? Up? Yeah. I wouldn't want to do it for him. No, I'm not saying that you would. I'm just saying though, I, I understand. And I get that when you have someone, when you have a kid who, who, you know, traditionally in a culture, if they get married that young, it makes more sense for the parents to have more involvement, or at least I could see that because I feel yeah, like a 16 year old. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like, again, my point, do you think that you knowing your son, you know, you could match him up with a better life, not saying that you would want to, or you would ever yeah. do that. But I mean, I would think that you feel confident about your ability to match your son up better than he could match himself. I think up. every parent, right? Every parent thinks that they know better for the kids and their kids know for themselves. Maybe. I mean, I don't know if I would feel that way if my kid's older, you know, my kid's 25, 28 years old and often and living and doing their own thing and have been for, you know, a decade or whatever. Well, but you know how it was often- at 16 when you've been raising them you yeah. see them every single morning you know all their their flaws you know their tendencies like at that point in their life yeah. you know how it's often judged is is not necessarily the the mate it's the parents and the family it's how they would judge back in those days yeah so it wouldn't be like oh let me interview this 16 year old girl to marry my son it's more like, oh, it's I know It's a merger of both families. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that, I, I like their dad. He's cool. The I mean, that nice. also makes a lot of sense, though, too, right? It's when true. You, when you talk about, you know, you, you can tell a lot probably about a kid by the way they were raised by their, their family and their parents and their oh, culture yeah. and their values, right? I'm sure you could probably- That also- Well, like, that that's why Courtney and I are so fascinated with that show on Netflix that's you know, goes through all these Indian couples that are getting set up, you know, from their families because- it goes through all of that kind of stuff and they, you know, they figure out like, w like what kind of like traditions they're all about, like how they raised, uh, you know, their kids and all that kind of stuff. And it's, it's really fascinating to see that, um, it, it has been pretty successful. Yeah. But there's also cases where it screws people. Like I know someone totally, I know someone in Sicily, so older gentleman, but he was raised by his mom and her two sisters, and none of them ever got married. Why? His mom got pregnant because she had an affair with a wealthy landowner in southern Italy. Once he got her pregnant, obviously fired her and kicked her out. I don't want nothing to do with you. Because, you know, she was pregnant without a husband, she never got married because that was like taboo. Like, oh, that's it. You're shunned. You, you never get married again. And because of that, her sisters never got married. Oh, wow. Because they were sisters with the woman that, you know, had wow. the whatever illegitimate. Oh my god, child. it affected them like that. The whole, all the, all the sisters. So he ended up getting raised by his aunts and his mom, and they nobody ever got married because of all because of that. So that's one of the downsides. It's like if you have a family member that does some stupid shit, 
Like, oh, that's oh, why yeah. it brings shame on the family. You know what I mean? Well, there's a there's a lot of cultures too that like uh, that you they rank their their daughter like based off of her skill sets, her beauty, all the things that she can like she does around the house. Like, and oh, they, that's messed up. And then they they actually like put like a dollar value to that. Like when when out trying to find a partner yeah. for them. Well, you want to marry my daughter? It's at least you know fourteen goats. You know, that's Yo, seriously. And I then know. it's, oh, well, cause she can, she has this skill set and she's very pretty and all this stuff like that. Like imagine being the, the, the sibling that's not, you know what I'm saying? You don't live up to like your, <laughs> your sister's expectations. The two goat her. kid, you know? <laughs> yeah, 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 dude. That would, uh, You're uh, like, come on. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Here's, one more than two goats. Here's my daughter, Jennifer. She's worth 14 goats. She does, all, uh, oh, is that too yeah. expensive? Well, let me introduce you to my other daughter. <laughs> it's <laughs> she's, the drop sale. Yeah, she, she's, a, she's a four goater. <laughs> she's a, <laughs> if you only got one go, you could try my other daughter yeah. here. Most yeah. her teeth aren't there, but she still can eat pretty well. And <laughs> we'll throw in a ferret. Yeah. You know, no, no cook some mean lasagna. The lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> hey, real quick, I hope you're enjoying the show. Head over to the Mind Pump Media Instagram page. So it's at Mind Pump Media, and check out and enter in our Strong Women Deadlift Challenge. If you win, you actually win money, and we do this challenge relatively often. So here's how you can enter. You go to the page, Mind Pump Media. You like the Strong Women Deadlift post. Tag another badass chick that deadlifts, so one of your cool friends. And then post a video of yourself deadlifting on Instagram. Tag Mind Pump Media and then use the hashtag, hashtag Strong Women Deadlift. We will notify you if you win. And if you win, there's two winners, by the way, you get a cash prize. So let's do this. Let's show everybody how strong women can be. All right. Enjoy the rest of the show. First caller is Jenna from California. Hey, Jenna, how can we help you? Hey. Um, okay. So I am been into fitness for a while, but I feel like my energy levels just suck. And my question was, I feel like I'm overtraining, but I feel like I'm really not training at all. I'm just like, I'm busy. I'm a mom to a two-year-old. I work from home and I also ride my horse pretty frequently. So I would like to find a way to include strength training for health benefits, um, but keep my energy levels up too. Okay. Um, how, what does your exercise look like now? Now I know riding horses, a lot of people don't know this, but, uh, that's a very active, um, activity. It's actually quite exhausting. You know this from all the horses you rode? I actually did it. <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> So I used to train uh, somebody who did. Uh, <laughs> he just rides stallions. This guy's so all. full of shit. Sometimes. Oh, yeah. No, He's get the hell. Stallion, stallion. Hey, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Jenna, <laughs> am I wrong or am I right? No, you're right. I'm, there not, you go. Disag- I'm not disagreeing. There you go. I'm just saying. I, big, big I horse forgot rider. you're the one that owned horses. I can make horse noises. <laughs> That's, That's all I'm good for. No, I used to. Actually, <laughs> I used to train somebody who. Uh, what is it called when they when they stand on the horse and they do like acrobatics and stuff? Is that vaulting? Oh, that's. That's vaulting. That is, um, that's pretty, pretty wild. Yeah. So I used to train someone that did that and then we would have these conversations and then I rode a horse once and I couldn't believe how exhausted I was afterwards. <laughs> anyway, anyway, it's a lot of activity. Are you doing any yeah. exercise on top of that? Are you doing any resistance training on top of that? Or are you just trying to add resistance training? Yeah. So right now I do, I ride three to four times a week, two days a week. I'll do like a 15, 20 minute full body workout at home with dumbbells um or bands and then one day a week i work on like just a long walk or some kind of yoga um but i'm finding after those strength training workouts i'm just exhausted you probably hear my two-year-old in the background Sorry. yeah no problem how's your how's your sleep oh the sleep i was super strict with this from like day one because i know mama needed sleep so she goes <laughs> oh good Okay, so Maps had a bullock once, yeah, you know, once twice a week, right yeah, there. Yeah, I, you know, whatever you're doing is is just too much. So yeah. it, it, the problem, sometimes a challenge we get into, is that we feel tired and we, you know, we get an idea or a clue that maybe we're doing too much. But then what we do is we look at our workout and then we judge it. So we look yeah. at it and go, "This can't be too much. I'm not doing that much." Or I used to be able to do this, and it didn't bother me, and I felt okay. And so we kind of throw away everything that we're currently feeling. So you have to listen to your body. So no matter what, whatever you're doing is too much. So what I would do is I would reduce the resistance training from twice a week down to once a week. Just do one full body workout a week. Go okay. easy and and allow your body to kind of recover. Then the other aspect is diet. Uh, you might be eating too little 
or maybe not enough of the one of the macronutrients, proteins, fats, sometimes carbs. Sometimes people need to increase their carbs. Do mm -hmm. you know what your your food intake looks like calorie wise and macro wise? I haven't I haven't tracked because I had some disordered eating tendencies. So I haven't tracked in a long time. I probably could now with it being less of a big deal. Um, but I do try to eat whole foods and focus on protein. Could probably have more protein. Though. You, you think you could in increase your protein? What about your fat and your carbs? I feel like fat, that was a big thing for me. Thought fat made me fat, but I've gotten over that. So I feel good with fat and carbs. Um, but maybe just adjusting how, where I'm eating. Yeah, I would, I would try bumping your food intake a little bit um, and reducing the resistance training. And then uh, be patient. Allow your body to slowly acclimate and base it off of how you feel. Don't look at what you're doing and say, oh, this is, you know, like I said, I, I've done this before. I'm like, oh, I can't possibly be, too, be doing too much. This doesn't yeah. look like much, but you have to listen to your body. And it's, it's as you, you get older, as things change, so is your tolerance for activity and exercise. Besides the horse riding, are you doing, uh, are you doing anything as far as cardio? I saw, I, I saw in your question that you, Jillian Michaels and Zumba, are you doing, yeah. any, are you doing that anymore? No. Or is that just the past? That was a past life of me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> is that like a I, confession or what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that's kind of where guys. I started. <laughs> I had to be honest. Um, no, I sure. just get in. I start work at 6 a.m. So I try to get a walk before so that I'm not sitting in my house till 2 p.m. So okay. I try Are to you, get outside and get I a mean, walk I, in. I, I like the advice, Sal. You know, I would love to, to see you train. <laughs> Well, one to two days a week, maps and I'd start one, and then because we could always scale up if you're <laughs> feeling great from just doing one, uh, maps anabolic. Uh, I'd also love to put you on a little bit of a calorie surplus right now. I know you want to lean out right now, and you want to go potentially the other direction, um, mm -hmm. but there is a good chance that just for the, all the activity and the stuff that you have going on, that you might just be a little low calorie. So, and you're you're okay. you're not you're not giving the body quite what it wants and needs for what you're doing. So reducing down to a one day a week full body routine, bumping up our calories a little bit, just kind of seeing where we're at, and then I would I would just kind of go from there. And so long as you're feeling good, uh, I'd maintain that potentially adding another day of, of full body routine if if we like the direction that your your body's going. But that would be my my suggestion. You know what, Jenna? Something just popped into my head. Uh, mm -hmm. So when you're out there riding three four days a week, uh, I'm, you're obviously outside. It's been very hot. You're in California. Mm -hmm. You're sweating a lot. Is this right? Probably sweating yeah. a lot while you're doing it. Right? And you're eating, <laughs> you said, a whole food-based diet. Yeah. Um, I wonder, tea, huh? Yeah, I wonder if, you're, mm -hmm. okay. if you need to bump your sodium um, okay. intake. Here's the cool thing about sodium, if that's the issue, you'll notice right away. So it's not, it's not like you have to do it for a month to see a difference. If you yeah. if you start to bump your sodium, you could try LMNT. That's the, the obviously the company we work with. It's just... It tastes really good and it's got an appropriate level of sodium. Or you could try throwing some salt, some like, you know, Himalayan salt in your water uh, okay. while you're riding. Try bumping your sodium and see if that makes a difference. I've actually had some, in, some experiences with clients where that was the issue. Like we did everything else. And then finally we're like, let's see what happens if you, you know, have a little bit more sodium. And then like magic, they feel a lot better. Like I said, you'll notice the the first day, the first day or two, if if that is the, you know, is, is the issue. Are you getting any like headaches or muscle cramps or anything like that? Um, no headaches and no muscle cramps really. So I feel like, you know, that's another indicator. I'm not doing too much. That's awful. So just a few tweaks maybe. Okay. Yeah. I, I give that a shot and see if that does anything for you. It would be awesome if that was the problem, right? Cause you could just yeah. supplement with sodium <laughs> and then boom, feel a lot better. Yeah. Cool. Do you have access to Maps Anabolic, by the way? I do not. All right, cool. All right, we'll give that to you. So we'll send that over to awesome. you. And you just Thank do you. one of the foundational workouts a week to start with. Try all the stuff that we said, and then uh, I would love to hear back from you. I will. I definitely will. All right. Thank you, Jenna. Thank you so much, guys. No problem. I, I like I, I like the uh, food direction with her because it sounds like she's decent as far as activity training yeah. sleep uh, she's even trying to get rest yeah, yeah so she's pretty on top of it yeah it's you know it's you know it's this is so hard right i don't know if you guys have ever done this but where you're doing a workout program or diet and either you have nagging 
inflammation or you're just your body's not responding and it's like rather than listen to your body you think to yourself it can't possibly i can't possibly be doing too much this doesn't look like a lot and so you end up questioning how your body feels which is a trap you know what i mean you have to mm-hmm. listen mm-hmm. to your body uh because that's the best coach you could possibly you know ever have well the supplement market thrives on that uh because it's like trying to find that that one perfect key to to unlock what's really happening when in fact it could just be that you're just doing too much totally our next caller is jake from ohio hey what's up jake how can we help you hey guys um so i'll just get right into it um i am a mixed martial artist um about to turn pro here Uh, i fight at 145 yet i walk around about 180 pounds so it's a pretty big, uh, pretty big cut. Um, my only issue is, is so like during the, you know, off season, there's never off season, but when I'm not in fight camp, I'm always trying to build up muscle and get stronger because that is when I have lost before, I feel it's usually I'm getting, uh, uh, it's more on a physicality kind of standpoint. Um, so my question is, is, is how to gain you know, you know, good strength without gaining too much weight, um, which I know it's usually, you know, it's not about, it's not about the weight, but in my case, I have to make a certain weight. Um, and then once I do start fight camp, not to lose that muscle. So, um, we had this body scanner thing at this gym I have or that I go to and my last fight camp from the day I started fight camp to, um, the day before weigh-ins, I lost nine pounds of muscle. Right. So that, that's where I'm kind of at right now. That's pretty. That's actually pretty common and typical in, in your situation for sure. Who would you guys say, uh, uh, George St. Pierre, uh, Conor McGregor, who's pretty good at, at at this as far as maintaining their weight relatively close to their their fighting weight, so this doesn't happen because this is very typical of a of a fighter who yep. puts on. 20 30 sometimes 40 pounds in the off season and then when they go to cut for a show um they lose a significant amount of money but, but and by the way that's inevitable if the, if you if you put on that much weight uh in compared to what you fight at uh it's it would be impossible to lose 20 30 pounds and not lose uh some muscle along the way yeah so the, the, the strategy is this well first off Jake wh- how much of that weight are you cutting right mm-hmm. before the fight. In other words, <clears throat> you know, I know there's a certain amount of weight that you're probably cutting through, you know, water manipulation and and you know using the sauna. So when you before you start doing that kind of a cut, which typically is done the day before or two days before, what is your weight at? So my goal, if it's going to be what I call an easy cut, there's no such thing as an easy cut. But um, if I can be ten pounds above weight the week of the fight so that monday before the fight i'm pretty happy okay so then we'll, we'll cut 10 pounds of water usually okay uh, sometimes it ends up being more sometimes it's less so the key to this is so this is different for you than i than i would be uh you know this is different advice i'll give you than i would give someone else the key unless you you want to move up in a weight class the key is to stay as close to your fighting weight yeah. year round as possible now i know what we think is we could bulk up and then cut down and then end up with right. more muscle. But really what happens is that process of cutting is really how you'll start to feel uh, weaker. If you're close to the weight, and I think you kind of already experienced that, like you said, if you can walk, if you could be a week out and be 10 pounds above, then you feel best. Your best bet is to not let your weight go up to 180 pounds um, at all. I, I wouldn't let my weight go up above 165 mm-hmm. pounds. You know, this is common with uh, bodybuilders too. Yes. So in the bodybuilding space, this is a common mistake uh, that I would see happen where guys in the off season, they put on so much weight trying to, you know, add, add muscle every show. And it's like, and then they would cut and then they end up right back to where they started or maybe one pound of muscle more, but they put on 30 pounds yep. in the off season to get there. And it's like, that's such a dramatic shift just for one pound of muscle. They would have been far better off maintaining their body weight, five, 10 pounds close to what their show weight is. And the same thing I would, I would say with like some fighters is they put on such an extreme amount 
of weight, and it actually ends up uh, hurting them more than it ends up helping them. Yeah, totally. I, I would I would stay cl as close to your fighting weight as you know, probably within f fifteen to twenty pounds is what I would do <clears throat> right. before you start to get ready for your fight or decide to move up uh, in a weight class. Now, as far as training is concerned. You know, traditional resistance training, explosive movements, uh, compound lifts, that's all the same. If I if I were to advise you versus, yeah. you know, somebody who wants to gain muscle or gain weight, it would be the same. It's really a function of your nutrition. Now, there yeah. is one thing you can focus on that would that could improve the strength as it translates in the ring. And that is to improve your functional mobility. So what that means is, and I'm sure you've experienced this, Jake, where, you know, you train with the guy in the gym, you're lifting weights and they're just way stronger than you. But then when you guys get on the mat, your, for what, your strength just translates right. better. Just, yeah. Okay. So, so there's a couple of ways, a couple of reasons for that. One is technique and leverage, which is your training, I'm sure all the time with your jujitsu and your, you know, your Muay Thai and all that stuff. But the other thing is this functional mobility, right? So do you have longer ranges of motion that you own? So somebody, for example, who could lift, you know, deadlift 300 pounds, they would be stronger, usually would be stronger on the mat than someone who could deadlift 300 pounds if they had better mobility and connection to longer ranges of motion because now they could express that strength in all the different weird, awkward positions that end up in a fight. Because yeah. obviously that, that goes right into what I was going to bring up with end range strength and isometrics, um, you know, and something that you can, you can definitely improve uh, the generation of force and you don't have to put on a lot of mass to do that. That's very central nervous system based. So, um, you know, if you kind of gear your training a little bit more around what Sal's talking about, but also then adding load to that. So some of these positions, you know, if you can find kettlebells or, you know, something that's a little more versatile in terms of like loading these type of end range of, uh, you know, uh, end ranges, then you, you, you're going to be able to increase that strength. Oh yeah. Do, do you yeah, have, so like, right, go, ahead, sorry, go ahead. Uh, well, my question was if you, I, I want to know if you had maps prime pro, cause I feel like that would be the perfect yeah. thing that you could utilize. Yeah. So, um, my, so just to back up for a second, my coach is actually, cause I feel better at this, like, at like walk around like 175 to 180. Like I feel obviously stronger. I feel healthier. Like I get injured less. Um, so my coach is actually wanting me to drop to, or go up to 155 for my fights. Mm. But that's what I've, uh, I have maps. I, I bought that bundle it was, it was anabolic maps, prime pro and maps prime. And, um, I've been using that because there's only so much time in the day to, you know, do my skill training, do my strength training. And then obviously, and I work as well I'm in law enforcement. So, uh, like being able to lift, you know, two, sometimes three times a week has been a lot uh, more beneficial and I've gained a ton of strength. I'm about to start my second phase now, awesome. uh, this next coming week. Awesome. Yeah. Your, your, your nice. best exercises are deadlifts, presses, rows, and then like windmills, Turkish get-ups. And then I would do maps, prime pro stuff every single day, because like okay. I said, it, you could not gain any strength on your compound lifts, just gain functional mobility and connection to longer ranges of motion and better control. Like Justin said, isometrics, that's your best friend. It really is. I mean, if you can, you know, there's, there's of course, explosive strength and strength that you can, you know, uh, apply with lots of force, but then there's the kind of strength that just lasts. You know, if you've ever grappled with yeah. a really good jujitsu guy or Greco guy, and you know, if they get a hold of you, it's like an, an anaconda. Yeah, not fun. Yes. So I would do maps prime pro, like just do that often and, uh, and, and improve on that. And you don't have to gain any muscle to get stronger uh, in the ring if you get better functional mobility and the calories oh. uh, to to support that you don't have to go i mean in this back to kind of comparing this to the bodybuilders you don't have to eat in that much of a surplus to to get stronger in these no. areas it's like i mean you're literally yeah. just a little bit above maintenance in fact my goal for you would be to you know can i slowly uh increase calories and not actually put that much weight on the scale so I'd actually kind of yeah. try and maintain my weight. So long as I'm getting stronger, right? If I if if I'm getting stronger in the gym, 
um, more than likely you're you're either one you're you're training the isometrics and your and that strength is going up or you uh, you are building muscle you know even just because the scale isn't going up 5 10 15 20 pounds doesn't necessarily mean that we, we are not getting stronger and we're not building muscle in the gym yeah I- unrelated but yeah my wife is uh she just came off a bikini show so that's what she's they do like they're just like slowly adding calories back to into her nutrition nice right now yeah well so i appreciate it guys yeah good deal and you know are you in our forum i don't think so i don't know i might be all right well if, <laughs> if you're not jake we'll, we'll get you in there for free because there's some other um, uh, MMA, uh, you know, fighters in there and people that have okay. some experience and it's cool to share experiences and get some insight. So you might get some advice, uh, in the forum that would help. So we'll, we'll get you a free access in there. I appreciate it. Thank you guys. Go no kick problem. some ass, man. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. What a, a challenge, right? Like Justin, you're, you're a football guy and oftentimes mm-hmm. in football, you want size. You want to gain. Oh, you're always trying to gain. Yeah, you're trying to gain more mass because it's um, it's very it's very much like how much ground can you acquire. So you know, mass is beneficial in that arena, but uh, in wrestling and MMA, you know, these weight cuts are really challenging because you lose that weight and then you're trying to gain it back. You know, after your weigh-ins, and you just feel fatigued and weak. Yeah, I, have you guys ever? Well, I know Adam because of your shows you've had to cut real lean and come down. I mean, are you like, you're probably your weakest. Oh yeah. The day no. of the show. No, I mean, they call them, they call them walking dead men at that point. Yeah. Right. So, but I mean, this, it's, this is common, man. This is really com- this. And I, I think we fell into this even as uh, just young lifters, this idea of like, you have to put on this, a bunch of mass in order to add a few pounds of muscle. And you, you really do not have to. And he's going to feel better the closer he can stay to his fighting weight totally. as possible. So, yeah. you know, that way more athletic. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, but it, I get it though, because it can get in your head. Like, I mean, if you, if you fight at a 145 or a 150 and you're only 160, you probably feel like, oh my God, I'm not putting on very much. Yeah. But honestly, you're probably going to perform a lot better when you go in there because it's not that dramatic of a cut versus someone who's mm-hmm. got to go 20, 30 pounds down. You're just exhausted after yeah, that. Yeah. Cause the theory is yeah. you, you, you walk around heavy, then you hit the mat or the ring and you're, you're a bigger, small guy, right? So now you're stronger. But sometimes it doesn't work that way because you cut so much weight, you actually show up to the fight and you feel like garbage. I, you know, one of my cousins was a, a wrestler mm-hmm. and his coach kept having him cut so much and he, and he would feel dizzy and tired. And I'm like, dude, wrestle at a higher weight. And he says, no, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll be weaker at a higher weight because everyone's going to be bigger. I said, no, you won't. I said, you're weaker now. And he did. He actually competed at a higher weight and he's like, bro, night and day, I feel so much better. They're- yeah, and I get it because the coaches want them to win and have the best, you know, chance uh, at maybe going at a lower weight class. But you know, your your natural fit a lot of times you're you're kind of fighting your body just to get you know down in that low of a weight. You know, there there is a there is a massive individual variance here too, and that you have to kind of know your body type because there are some people. Um, you know, I had an ex that was like this where. I mean, she could dramatically cut calories and, and cut a ton of weight. <laughs> and just and her, keep muscle. And keep muscle. Yeah. And her body just, and you and I were just talking about this uh, after having COVID and stuff like that. It's like, man, I, I have the body type where, uh, you know, I lost 10 pounds and guarantee six of it was muscle. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah. saying? That's just my body type. Now, yeah. there's I have pluses too. My body will respond and add really quick. And so, you know, I it's it's not all negative because that happens, but you you, you do want to know your body type. You may not be the type or you might have a, a, a someone who's in your fight camp or a, one of your companions that they are able to drop 30 pounds and hang on to yeah. all their muscle. And you can't compare... Uh, them to you because that's where the genetic variance is even if they have similar diets similar routines but yet when they cut they hang on to all their muscle mass you're the type that maybe loses a significant amount when you dramatically cut like that our next caller is micah from florida hey what's up micah how can we help you hey guys uh love the content just want to say thanks first um so what i got going on is i've kind of run into a string of bad luck uh, i guess you could say I, um, I got, I uh, got sick, um, probably, uh, six weeks ago. It wasn't COVID. It was some probably daycare bug, um, recovered from that after 10 days, got back to exercising and then immediately caught COVID. Oh. Uh, I caught COVID three weeks ago, 
mild symptoms, um, sub 100 fever, tons of exhaustion, no real respiratory issues, minor respiratory issues. Um, and that took me out for about, I'd say 10 give or take days. Um, and so now I'm three weeks, you know, post it, but I'm still going through this post COVID fatigue. And I'm at a point where I feel like I kind of need to push through it, start exercising again. Um, but the problem of guys just this is the fatigue weight feels so heavy, you know, cardiovascularly feel everything just feels extra. Um, and I want to put together a plan, but I don't want to overdo it. But at the same time, I don't want to sell myself short. So I figured I'd reach out for your advice on to kind of how to get back to what I was doing prior. Well, welcome to the club. Yeah. And uh, yeah, good, right? good timing with this question, since this is all on our mind. Totally. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, Michael, when you're in a situation like this, uh, you have to weigh out the risks of underdoing it versus the risks of overdoing it, right? Exactly. So yeah. what are the risks of underdoing it? Well, you, you don't, I guess, progress as fast as you possibly could. What are the risks of overdoing it? way worse, right? You could yeah. really set yourself back. You could cause yourself injury, have to take a bunch of days off. So you really can't underdo it uh, is, would, would be the strategy that I would have. So I would go real easy. I mean, if you're doing nothing now, then I would mm -hmm. literally, you know, and, and if you're used to, you know, on your question, it says here that you do six days a week of mountain biking before and look like you're real active. Yeah. I would go like for a like easy cruise on the bike and then come home okay. and just do that, you know, uh, every day or so and see how you feel. Okay. And then if you feel good after the first week of that, then I'd throw in one day a week of really light resistance training. Really your goal is just full range of motion and just practicing the lifts. And then okay. if that feels good, then you ramp up a little bit again and just take your time. The other thing is that, that, and this is, I'm not a doctor, so I want to say this ahead of time. Um, mm -hmm. but just for my own reading that some people post, uh, COVID just have this kind of lingering inflammation in their body and that they think that that could be what's contributing to some people having what they call long COVID. So okay. I would structure my nutrition and supplements around inflammation. So like fish oil, lots of fish oil. I would take that. I would, uh, I would, you know, e even reduce my carbohydrates a little bit that might help okay. with some, with some of that. Uh, a baby aspirin every day might be good. Uh, they recommend okay. that anyway, just to prevent, you know, the potential blood clotting that can happen and just pay attention to, you know, stuff that could help with inflammation and see if that makes a difference. But go going easier than you should is way better than going harder than you should is, is my whole point. With there, this. There's nothing wrong yeah. with just dipping your toe in the water a little bit right now. I know yeah. Doug is back to lifting. Sal is back to lifting. I don't think Andrew is. And yesterday, I literally yesterday I did I did five uh, five exercises one set and it was literally just to feel yeah. I just wanted to feel yeah, it out right. and then assess how I felt later on and uh, I was fine doing those I didn't obviously break a sweat I didn't even lift weight that was challenging weight for me I just wanted to see how I would feel afterwards definitely was uh, a little fatigued and tired later on in the day and so that's just yeah. this the sign back to me that okay I'm not I'm definitely not ready to get after it um, today okay. I might do a, a handful of more exercises there's uh, you know we, we have this idea all the time that if we if we're not sweating or we're not sore it's it's a, it's worthless or we're not really working yeah. out and it's that's so not true especially uh, in all of our situations right now where we're coming off something like this. So, uh, and then I'm, I'm walking at night. So I walked with Katrina for like a good half hour just with the dog and just went for an easy stroll. And so just ease yourself in and, and, uh, I would, I would lean on the, the easier, lighter, less work side until you get this feeling of after you do a few of those exercises, you go, Oh wow, that's energizing me or making me feel good. And that would be my sign of, okay, mm -hmm. let me start to ramp up a little bit more volume or intensity. Yeah. Usually when I've taken time off and you know, me not having it right now. So it's like, I'm not kind of in the same boat as, as the guys, but yeah. um, it is to really like reframe this and to address certain instabilities um, I, I usually tend to gravitate more towards unilateral training. Uh, this is why, like in our MAP starter program, 
we sort of laid things out that really addressed a lot of, um, you know, getting the body back to, you know, reconnecting and, and addressing any type of imbalance. So, yeah. you know, to, to be able to kind of dive into that, because we get in kind of uh, momentum with our training a lot of times where we're just always trying to, per, you know, perpetually progress. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, using this as an opportunity to kind of address maybe some instability things that could come back to kind of haunt you later as you're trying to really like work on your performance again, I think would be, you know, a great strategy. Yeah. So are the infamous cardio killers telling me I should probably ease in with some cardio first and, <laughs> well, and then yeah, yeah, walking, and progress walking, from there? Walking is not a bad yeah, idea. And also yeah. you, you wrote, you did a lot of mountain biking. I'm sure you enjoy yeah. it. So, and you know, yeah, yeah. look, here's the deal. You know, we talk, when we talk about cardio in the context that you're referring to, it's yeah. when we talk about people who are, you know, that's, that's all they do and they want to lose I, body I, fat. I and, yeah. So, but I say tongue in cheek, that's it. Perfect. Um, but someone like, so, do you, so go ahead. Should I ease it? So you think just so ease into some cardio kind of increase the um, intensity of it until I, or, or mix in maybe a, a day of cardio, a day off, a day of very light resistance training. Yes. Strategy Abs- would you implement? Yes, absolutely. Just what you just said. So I would okay. do a really light ride with my bike and then the day after or the day after that, then do really light, full range of motion, resistance okay. training. Give yourself like, you know, I mean, you, you yeah. figure you were sick for, you were sick before, then you got COVID. Give yourself like three, four weeks of slowly okay. ramping wow. things yeah. up and muscle memory is a beautiful thing. You don't need to do much to get that to, yeah. to kick in. So let your body okay. do its thing. I really like Justin's advice too, because um, I'm kind of dabbling with this right now. Uh, I don't like putting it out on the podcast because I haven't fully committed yet in my head. But I, when this happens to me, where I have to kind of like reset and s- kind of start from scratch again, this is also always a. I always like to come back with kind of a new goal too, like that thing that I haven't been addressing. You know, whatever. What mm-hmm. like Justin was alluding to, like posture stuff and stability or. Yeah range of motion or that mobility, you know, thing that I should be doing that I know I'm not doing. And so I, I like to take this opportunity of like a clean slate starting over and it's like, okay, you know what, there's that thing that I've been, you know, telling myself I need to be doing in the gym more. Like I'm going to start to implement that. So since I have to start so slow and gradual, this is a good time to start at square one with this kind of new goal. So it's a good time to do something like that right now. So I, and only, you know, what that probably is for yourself but not yeah. a bad idea to start to maybe implement that too. So maybe look, focus on some rotator cup instead of there, just jumping right into there the There you go. Oh, you, yeah. exactly, exactly. My, my, exactly my point. You know you've got yeah. some rotator cuff stuff. You know that's kind of tedious and boring probably to do, and you know, but you know yeah. you need to do it. It's like, you know what? You shouldn't be training super hard right now anyway, so why don't you do some of that stuff that you know you should have been doing for quite some time anyways and start putting yeah. a little energy and focus there. Okay, perfect. That makes sense. All right. Very cool. Thanks cool. for calling. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. No problem. People in a, uh, like a tangible example of you know, what we're talking about. So my typical workout, let's say my typical leg workout would usually consist of something like four or five sets of squats, uh, four or five sets of you know front squats. I might do some hips thrusts. I might throw in some stiff-legged deadlifts. And so that would be a total workout, right? So it'd probably be a combined, you know, 15 sets for my legs. Here's what I did yesterday for my legs. Three sets of walking lunges. I held 30 pound dumbbells, which for me is super light. Normally I'd put as much as 135 or 160 pounds on my back. So I held 30 pound dumbbells, three sets of walking lunges, three sets of stiff legged deadlifts with 30 pounds. That's it. So I did six sets total, super light. So just to give people an idea of just how easy you want to kind of ease yourself into it. And today I feel okay. I feel good. My legs feel good. I could tell I did a little bit of work on them and I'm not going to ramp up the volume until next week, but I'm not going to ramp it up to what I, what I left at still. I'm going to give myself at least two or three <laughs> Yeah, weeks. I was even <laughs> even weaker sauce than that. I mean, mm-hmm. I did, yesterday I did incline, uh, incline bench press with like uh, 100 pounds mm-hmm. and I, I did like 10 real slow controlled reps. I went over and did some tricep push downs. I did some uh, cable rows with like hardly any weight. I mean, literally, I did some just re- a move. reverse. Yeah, it was literally just a move. It was like, let me see what happens when I lift some of this weight and just see how my body feels. And really, I'm looking to see how I felt later on. It's like, okay, let me do this stuff right now. 
And do I get that feeling yeah. of, oh, I, if I, it energized me for the rest of the day or did it make me feel fatigued and tired? And I actually felt some fatigue and tired. So to me, that's the sign that like, okay, you know, I'm definitely not ready to get after a workout. And so staying kind of in this, you know, one to two sets of exercises really, really light and just move the body right now is kind of where my focus is. Our next caller is Jenna from North Carolina. Hi, Jenna. How can we help you? Hey, I'm good. Um, so I had a question for you guys. I'm a fitness instructor, primarily right now teaching um, Zumba, Step, and uh, a core and um, targeted class. And I'm actually getting ready to start phase two tonight of the sp um, split program. And um, just kind of wanted to get your input, um, listening to you guys a lot on your podcast about how to best incorporate these exercises and um, these programs while teaching classes. How many how many classes a week are you teaching right now? Um, three total. Oh, okay. Uh, three classes that's a not, week. That's not bad. And you've been doing that for a while? Um, I have. I've been teaching classes for six, seven years now. Oh, okay. Your body's pretty adapted. I, you, you know, you're fine. I wouldn't add anything else. So I would teach the classes do this map split, which is pretty high volume. If you find yourself feeling a little overtrained. Yeah, honestly, I think anabolic would have been a better place to start. Yeah, you might want to back off and do like maps anabolic. But if okay. you've been doing it for a long time, sometimes, oftentimes, people's recovery gets real good. They're pretty adapted. I wouldn't add anything else, okay. though. I wouldn't do extra cardio. I wouldn't do any other extra workouts. Have, Jen, is this your first maps program? Have you followed anything else? It is my first maps program. I love weightlifting. Um, I used to do a lot of it when I was in the Marine Corps and – I took a break from it for a while and um, um, kind of went on to my own program a little bit. And then I started listening to you guys and just really wanted to jump back into it. And so that's where I'm at. Oh, so, so you, you jump back into it with Map Split? Yeah, I would prefer. Yeah. So I, we're going to give you Maps. Well, we're going to give you Maps and a baller. I jumped back into it with my own program for about a year oh, and okay. then did Map Split. Okay. Well, are you getting stronger right now with Map Split? Absolutely. Oh well, you're you're fine. If you're getting stronger, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you're getting stronger, you're 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 totally fine. Um, and I just wouldn't add anything else. Strength is the best gauge. It's a it's objective. It's if you're getting stronger, you're probably doing a lot of things right. But I I definitely wouldn't add more. Now here's the deal: after doing map split, you probably would benefit from going down in volume to a maps anabolic. Believe it or not, just because okay. split has so much volume. Go down to MAPS Anabolic, and you'll probably get great strength gains again. Yeah, I would have preferred her there. I would have preferred – if it was my choice, I would put you on Anabolic right now and then have you go to split afterwards. I just think that okay. you – I mean, it's just, I just had this conversation with Katrina not that long ago because – you know, and to Sal's point, yes, you're getting results and stuff like that, so it's working. But it's like if I can have you doing less volume and we, and it's working and we're seeing great results, I would always rather that. I would always rather us doing less work for the same or more results, so we have somewhere to go after that. Because the the amount of volume and split is significantly higher than anabolic. So it, if I can get the same results strength wise for you with just doing maps anabolic that allows me to progress you better when you go into split than if you go to split right now and then we're trying to, then we have to go backwards as far as volume. I would just, I mean, we're all send it up. We'll send it over to you. So you have it. Um, personally, that's okay. uh, where I would like to see you first. But other than that, it sounds okay. like, I mean, the amount of uh, classwork you're doing, I actually think is great. A three, three hours a week is actually probably really great for you. Um, and it's not a concern. It would only be a concern. I think if you were doing that, every day or twice a day, every yep. day. Uh, but the amount of, of cardio you're doing is actually probably really healthy, really good balance for you. And MAPS Anabolic okay. actually complements uh, that 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 amount of uh, training volume right now and I think would be perfect. Yeah, I can't disagree with you. Okay. That's a first. Well, thanks, you guys. I really appreciate it. And I'm seriously in third, you know, enjoyed listening to you guys on the podcast. You guys are no BS, straight to the point. And that's what people need. They need to stop reading on the internet a bunch of stuff and listen to you guys. Because seriously, you guys have helped me out a ton. Oh, so, yeah. You're welcome. And, yeah, you know, thank and, you. And Justin, I, I, I love his input because I know he was a huge Zumba guy back in the day. <laughs> he still is. Oh, yeah. he's, 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 I haven't <laughs> broken that habit yet, man. Yeah. I like to shake them hips. <laughs> I love Zumba. I've been teaching it for eight years. I love it. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it looks like a lot of fun. I, I have two left feet though. If I tried doing something like that, I'd probably kill the person next to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, thanks for calling in. Awesome, Jenna. Thank you. 
Thanks. Bye. No problem. Yeah, you know, one thing that we have to also consider is that's why I asked her, like, how long have you been teaching classes like this? Like, you know, for example, and I, I always use this example, but, you know, my, my dad is, was a blue collar worker his whole life. And when I would go to work with him as a teen and with his workers, like these guys had been working construction for, you know, decades. Yeah, they can do it in their sleep now. And, yeah. And it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't overtrain them because they're just, their bodies are so active. They're just so efficient at it. Yeah. Exactly. And I mean, if I did, you know, eight hours a day of roofing or tile work or mixing cement, I'd be overtrained to shit for like a whole year, you know? So mm-hmm. you, you got to take that into account also. Is the fact that she's been doing it for so long. She's, you know, her body probably doesn't really even, it doesn't phase her, I would, I would imagine. Yeah, it's really low too. I mean, I'd, even if she'd been doing it for a really long time, I, I might be a little more concerned if she was doing teaching too. I mean, I had, uh, I taught a lot of class, I taught a lot of, um, I coached a lot of clients that were instructors. And it was mm-hmm. always difficult with the ones that were teaching multiple classes a day, day daily. Right? Yeah. Well, it, it was always challenging to get them to go through their entire rest period. Yeah. I remember having to well, kind of really and just to progress coach them, them on that. I mean, to progress yeah. them when they've been doing body pump and Zumba two, three times, you know, two, three hours a day, every day, like that's really, really tough to kind of, they, they need a reset where, I mean, she's, she's fine. I mean, what she's, what she's training right now is probably, and maps on a bulk, I think will complement it so well. I agree. Look, if yep. you like our information, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. We have tons of guides that can help you do everything from you know, building muscle, uh, burning body fat, improving your performance with some key exercises. We have guides for personal trainers. We have guides to help you with things like back pain. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. So you can find us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsal. And Adam is at mindpumpadam. 